It can be a lot of fun in Crokinole when you're able to angle off your opponent's button all the way into the center hole, or even to Rick O'Shea off an opponent's button, leaving yours in a higher scoring region of the board. And it's especially fun if you can carom off your opponent's button into a second one of their buttons, accomplishing the ever satisfying double takeout. And there are also times in playing Crokinole that you are going to want to do the exact opposite. You're going to want to accomplish what we call the hit and stick. And some people may say that this is a super simple shot, but we are going to cover three pointers that are going to help you be even more successful hitting and sticking. Then we're going to dig in and look at five different situations strategically when you are going to want to use the hit and stick. Let's take a look. Jeremy Tracy here of Tracy Boards. If you find this video helpful, please go ahead and flick that subscribe button, give us a like, a comment, and a share. Now, let's dig into your three pointers that are going to help you with the hit and stick. Pointer number one, I want you to be efficient. And what I mean by that is you don't wanna hit the button any harder than you have to. I'm not suggesting you just tap it because you absolutely want to make sure you get your opponent's button all the way off into the gutter but I'm suggesting that you don't want to blast it. The harder you hit the opponent's disc, the more likely you are to drift or angle off. Think of it like Goldilocks, like too soft, too hard, and then just right. Goldilocks hasn't been canceled yet, has she? I don't think so. Cool. Hit and stick pointer number two. I want you to aim dead center. And you may be sitting there going, well, duh, obviously you wanna hit the button center. So, but the point of this pointer is that I want you to dial in and focus on the dead center of that opponent's button. That's your bullseye, your target, your intention as you're lining up, hyper-focus on that center point. That is going to have it more likely to leave your disc exactly where your opponent's was before your shot. Hit and stick pointer number three get rid of the wax. Now we absolutely love playing Crokinole with playing wax. It makes the button slide faster and more entertainment, but there is a time like when you do the hit and stick that the wax is not your friend. So what I'm encouraging you to do is two things. One, take your disc and you want to wipe it off. Wipe it on your pants. Now I'm gonna assume you didn't just come in from changing your oil, assuming that your laundry is up to date and your pants are clean, just take that and give it a quick wipe and it's gonna get all the little granules that might be stuck on the disc. Now the second thing you're going to want to do is clear off your shooting area. Now I'm not talking about grabbing a broom or a squeegee and getting all intense about this. A most difficult attempt, yeah. trying to come in off a stone on the outside, trying to get the roll to the stone at the button. They're working on it frantically. There's the contact, there's the roll, she's made it! I'm just saying that a lot of times that as you play and you wipe the disc and then come up here, you slowly transfer more and more wax onto the board. So you've wiped your button off, then you just take your hand and wipe off where you're going to shoot from. What this is going to do by applying this tip is it helps protect you if you haven't perfectly applied tips number one and two. If, let's say you hit a little too hard, or let's say you hit a little titch off a of center, by having no wax on your button or your shooting area, you're going to be more likely to successfully have your button not angle off too far. Now a quick recap of your three pointers. You wanna be efficient, you wanna hit dead center, and you wanna remove your wax. Now you may be wondering, how often could you possibly want to use the hit and stick as a strategy? We're going to dig into five different situations in your Crokinole career when you're going to want to use your hit and stick skills. As we go through these, each one gets a little more advanced. So as we get to those fourth and fifth ones, what it's going to do is gonna give you some insight into how top level players think when they're looking at the board and deciding when and how to shoot their discs. Let's dig in. Situation number one, when you wanna use the hit and stick. You're at the end of the round, you've got final shot, and all you need to do to win the round is simply get a takeout. You need to remove your opponent's button and keep yours on. 
In that situation, I'm going to encourage you to apply what we just talked about with the hit and stick to make it that much more likely that you're successful in keeping your disc on. You just want to hit and stick, that's all you need to do. If you want to go for a fancier shot, that's fine, but if the objective is to win the round, the hit and stick is your friend. Now, there is an exception. Let's say that your opponent's button is sitting very close to the odor boundary line of the board. In this case, I'd encourage you not to aim for dead center. I'd encourage you to aim a little bit toward the inside of the board because it's actually safer to try to angle in just a little bit rather than if you try to hit dead center and you're a little off to the right, you could lose your shooter and lose the round. No, God! No, God, please, no, no! 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 Situation number two. We recently did a video about the peel when you want to take your button and your opponent's button off. Now situation number two we're gonna dig into is when you are trying to control the board and potentially force your opponent to peel off, giving you a shot at an open 20. So this is a situation where either you are up in 20s or you're even in 20s but you have the hammer and play is on the outside. So if your opponent's disc is there, what I'd encourage you to do is hit and stick, keeping the play to the outside and forcing them to try to make something happen. As my friend Roy Campbell likes to say, make them do the heavy lifting. So in that situation when you can keep it outside and keep control, the hit and stick is your friend. Situation number three is when your opponent ends up with their button on your side of the board. Sometimes in that situation you are able to utilize the hit and stick to draw an error, potentially draw an error out of your opponent. If the board is set up in such a way that you are able to hit and stick and leave your disc directly behind a peg, it leaves your opponent with a super tough shot and a lot of entertainment on the board as they hit pegs instead of hitting your button. Now the same thing, the exact same thing applies when it is deep on your side because this is such a tough spot for your opponent to hit. So basically if it's on your side of the board and you know that if you can leave your button there, it leaves your opponent with a really tough, frustrating shot, the hit and stick is definitely the way you want to go. Situation number four is when your opponent's disc is within the 15 circle. So you're not trying to control play by keeping it outside, you're trying to control what opportunities your opponent has even though it's inside around that ever fun 20 hole. Now, if you are able to pull off a hit and stick and again leave your opponent in a tough spot, for example, if they have a disc on your side of the board in front of the pegs and you are able to shoot a hit and stick, knock their button off and leave your disc directly in front of a peg, it's a very tough situation for them. Yes, there are very skilled players who are going to be able to do a pin 20 or a bounce back 20 and get and uh, score 20 points on you, but it's a low percentage shot and a lot of players can't do it and it's a lot of fun when that shot goes sideways. So a very similar situation, but slightly different, is it's within the 15 circle, but it's on the far side. So if it's in a situation like this, again, the hit and stick can be your friend. Let's say you hit and stick, leaving your button dead center, so your opponent has no opportunity to angle in. Their only option is to go for that very tough follow through 20 or to just continue play. But in either case, it, it doesn't give your opponent a lot of options to get back in the round. You're controlling, you're restricting the opportunities they have to win. Situation number five, and as I said before, as we dig into these, as we go deeper, it gets more and more and more advanced in the thinking. So this is the last situation we're going to talk about and we'll give you some insight as to how those top level NCA players look at the board and control what opportunities their opponent has. So in this situation we're gonna talk about is your opponent has a button on their side of the board. So you need, obviously you need to take that out. You need to hit that button in order to give a valid shot. What you want to do is make sure you're not giving them any opportunities to sink an angle in ricochet 20. We looked at the ricochet 20. We're gonna put a link to that video somewhere in this one. But what we talked about there was controlling that 135 degree angle. So what I'm suggesting is you look at it and if you were able to leave them in a situation that when they try to do the angle in 20, their 135 degree angle is going to take them straight into a post. That a post sits in between where your disc ends up and that 
that center hole. They may, if they're really skilled, they may still be able to angle into the 15 circle, but try to leave them in a situation that it's absolutely impossible for them to go off your disc and straight into that 15 hole. That is the level of thinking that you're always thinking, what opportunities am I leaving my opponent with? So there you have it. There's our three tips to help you hit and stick. You want to be efficient, you want to hit dead center, and you want to manage your wax. Did we miss anything? We really tried to go deep on this, but is there any tips or strategies that you have that have helped you accomplish the hit and stick? If so, drop it down below. And did we miss any situations where you feel that the hit and stick can be your friend? We tried to go deep on that as well, but overall, you really just wanna look at the board and ask yourself, okay, if I can leave my shooter sitting exactly where my opponent's button is now, does that leave my opponent in a tough spot or me in an advantageous spot? And if so, that's when you want to apply the hit and stick. So try these pointers, try these strategies, see what works for you. And even if you're like Goldilocks shooting too soft, too hard, then just right. Please always, always, always make sure you're having fun playing the greatest game on earth. Cool. Cool. Just need to wet my whiffle. <laughs>